Ladies and gentlemen, with no further ado, may I introduce you all to our very own Longhorn Lester's Wacky Pack. You're a little and you want to go to Longhorn Lester's. Let's go. Whoever wants to go to Longhorn Lester's. Uh-oh. Only littles who want to go to Longhorn Lester's. We only need the littles who want to go to Longhorn Lester's. Uh-oh. Jake, this might be a problem. No, I'm going too. <laughs> all right, all littles who want to go to Longhorn Lester's, get on up inside there. If you're a little and you want to go to Longhorn Lester's, Maggie, come out of there. Maggie, you're not going. Maggie! Where's Maggie? Maggie! Maggie, you're going to get yourself hurt. Only littles who want to go to Longhorn Lester's get inside the trailer. Let's go! Who else wants to go to Longhorn Lester's? Uh, we're not taking any pigs today. We're not taking any pigs today. Annie, you can't go. You got to stay here. Pebbles, you're not driving us to Longhorn Lester's, Pebbles. Ringo, are you all right, Jacob? Yeah. All right. I repeat, now that Ringo's out of the way. Ringo, you have to stay here. Ringo, you Ringo. cannot. Ringo, you're not going to Longhorn. <laughs> Ringo, you're not going to Longhorn Lester's. All right, I don't think y'all understand. You can't, Pebbles, you're not driving everyone to Longhorn Lester's. Ringo, you're not going. All right, now, here we go. We're looking for any goat who is not a rescue who would like to go to Longhorn Lester's. Ringo, you're a rescue. You're staying right here. Non-rescue goats only. Brady! All right, so I don't think everyone understands the rules here. What we're looking for are any non-rescue goat. Shirley, I'm sorry, baby. You're not gonna do, Shirley, do not take it out on the trailer. It's not the trailer's fault. Mr. Huck, you're not driving either. We're looking for non-rescued goats who would like to go to Longhorn Lester's. Old Danny Goat, you're staying here with me. Old Danny Goat, you're staying right here. Old Danny, come out of there. It's not quite as dramatic getting here with the goats as what it was with the cows. But let's go ahead and do them their justice. Let's do the goats their justice. There we go. Oh no, they're all over at the gate waiting for the new visitor. They think Moo's here. They're all over at the gate waiting for the new arrival. And they, I promise you, they think it's going to be Moo. So we're pulling around the far side of the barn for this delivery. All right, so I've just double checked, made sure all of the gates are secured, everything's closed and ready. Guys, I'm gonna go ahead and worm these uh, munchkins before I let them out. Uh, even though they were just wormed in March, we normally do it every three months. It's a little bit early, but I'd rather have them uh, prepared, you know, have their little intestines prepared for the different things they may come across out here. Let's not forget that these pastures have never been grazed by anything. Mr. Dub and Sharon had never had any animals whatsoever. All of the trash is picked up. I do have a burn pile to go over here, but I'll light that up in a few minutes. I want to get the goats out of the trailer. It's already noon and it's hot. Guys, I don't know if you know much about the psychology of a goat. I'm not saying I know everything. But what I do know is when you put that bell around that goat's neck, you instantly raise his or her stature up 10 notches. 
I'm going to be emotional when I do this because I will not choose the strongest goat in this group. When I say strongest, there are some that are bigger, some that are smaller, some that are healthier and stronger. Instead, I'm going to choose the goat that needs this. I'm going to choose the goat that needs this moment. And uh, I'm going to tell you a story later about a very similar incident in real life where Lester gave the bell to a kid that needed it and the, the world of difference it made in that child's life. Longhorn Lester's Wacky Pack. And the wackiest leader of them all is our very own Mr. Huck, the leader of the Wacky Pack. Come on out, you guys. Come have a look around. And the leader, he leads the way. Yummy. Oh my gosh, Huck, really? Everybody look. Oh my gosh. They're so proud of Mr. Huck. They're so proud of Mr. Huck as the leader. There's gonna be some jealousy. Of course there's gonna be some jealousy. I understand that already. There's gonna be a little bit of jealousy. But Mr. Huck, y'all, he's done it. Oh my gosh. So I'm gonna spend the rest of my day right here walking around with these babies, kind of shepherding them around to show them what's what. They're gonna be very aware. They're going to be very aware of all that's happening around them. Well, Mr. Huck's not. The leader is gonna be totally consumed with that right there. He's gonna eat. All right, so as of now, all of the babies have gone straight to eating some of the grass. Now, you guys know that goats are not naturally grazers. They prefer to forage. So they have no idea what's waiting for them over there in that thicket. But that's okay. I'm not going to force them along. I'm going to let them kind of make their way. I see that Mr. Huck's bell is fitting a little bit loose. I will also tighten that up before I'm, before I'm done. Let me, while we just watch the goats, can I talk to you for a minute about a story? A personal story that uh, happened a few years back. And uh, Lenny might be noticing a few of the different insects that are here. Now, I'm not feeling anything flying around me. But guys, the same piranha spray that I spray on the cows and horses can also go on the goats. I will spray them down. I actually have that sprayer in my truck. And so I will spray them down before if I start noticing anything. And his bell is fitting pretty loose. I will tighten that up. I give you my word on that. But while we watch the goats walk around and kind of figure out what's what, let me tell you a story about a kid named uh, Jose. I told this story a few times before, but in older videos. There was a kid in my classroom who was very overweight, uh, and this is when I taught fourth grade one year. Uh, Jose was a little guy who was who was a little bit overweight, and a lot of the kids, because of the, you know how kids can be, they did not give Jose much time or attention. He didn't really have many friends. He was a, um, he was also um, a little bit unkempt. He wasn't always as clean, and he wasn't as well dressed as some of the other kids. And I noticed as a teacher that kids were mean to him. Just in general, kids were overall mean to Jose. And I felt bad for him. You know, you really can't tell kids who they have to hang out with, who they have to have as friends. But I just noticed as the school year went by that they were just very, very distant to him. They wouldn't give him much time. They wouldn't play with them. And I just felt bad for the kid. So... A lot of times I would try to give life lessons. I would try to talk about real life and let the kids know, you know, about sometimes how their words can be hurtful. Uh, Huck, don't go to the trash pile, buddy. That's trash, that's trash to be burnt. That's dead stuff, Mr. Huck. You're the leader of this wacky pack. I'd rather you go find you some really good green stuff. There's a lot of green stuff. These guys are gonna already question his leadership abilities. <laughs> And then those dumb are saying, follow the weeder, everybody. Come on, wacky pack. Let's follow our weeder. Let's not follow the leader into the dead pile of trash and debris to be burnt. Uh, Mr. Huck, these two are saying, wait a minute, we're smarter than this. Um, so what happened was, I don't know, several months of this school year had gone by. Come on, babies, let's, let's show y'all where the water's at. Several months of our school year had gone by, and I decided one day that enough was enough. And whenever the kids had all gone off to recess, I uh, decided to do something. 
I took a piece of paper, like a notebook paper, and I scribbled a handwritten note pretending that I was a little girl in the classroom. And I wrote a quote unquote love note to Jose. And it said something, this has been years ago, but it said something to the effect of, Jose, I think you're cute. A lot of kids say mean things about you, but I know you're gonna grow up and be a big, strong football player. And you're probably gonna be a bodyguard when you, when you get big. Uh, and I said something like, do you have a girlfriend? Circle yes or no. It was something so stupid, y'all. It was a kid's handwritten stupid letter. I never signed who it was from. And on purpose, I dropped that note on the floor of the classroom. I made for sure that it was going to be found by somebody when all the kids came back to class. Sure enough, a little bit later, the kids all walk in. I'm at my desk. Someone finds the note. They all start talking about it. And, of course, the chatter around the classroom began to spread of which girl maybe you wrote it. So I'm kind of playing dumb. I'm like, what? What do y'all have? What's going on over there? What's going on? I walk over and I, quote unquote, snatch away the letter. And to be a real jerk, I go to the front of the class and I read that letter out loud. I read that letter out loud and I let everyone know that there's some, there's one little girl in this classroom. In this, you know, this classroom had 35, 40 kids. There are some little girl in this classroom of 35 kids who has a crush on Jose. This little girl didn't sign her name, but I demanded, I need to know who it was. Now at this point, all of these kids are all looking around the classroom at each other. They're all wondering who it might could be. And uh, then I start to read the note about how he's gonna be a football player and how he's gonna one day be a bodyguard. And now all of a sudden these dumb kids begin to think, you know what? Mr. Morrow's probably right. Jose is a big kid. He is going to be a star football player. And Jose is going to grow up and be a big guy. He probably is going to be a bodyguard to some rapper or some celebrity. Next thing you know, all of these boys, these little boys who had always been mean to Jose, begin to look up to him. They begin to admire him for his differences. The fact that he was a little bit heavier than the rest. They stopped noticing that his shoes were not the designer shoes. His pants were not the, the designer pants. Instead, they saw him for something different. They looked past all of that little stuff, and they saw Jose for the special gifts that he did bring to life. And so it wasn't for several years later. Several years had gone by, and, you know, those kids had moved on, and they had, you know... You make new friends, you have new classes, new relationships. And at some point, we had this announcement that we had the high school was going to come by and they were going to do some, uh, they were going to have some students come by and talk to our elementary kids about electives. Uh, electives, which would be your extracurricular courses like your, your band, your athletics, and, and whatnot. And so I could not wait. I took all of my fourth graders to the auditorium and I had them all sitting down there in their, in their seats and at some point the orchestra began to play and then the band played the cheerleaders all came out and you know the drill team and sure enough at some point here it comes at some point the athletes came onto the stage and if God forbid if there didn't stand Jose, a big old kid, god damn, he was big. And he was a star. He was a somebody. He was somebody special. <laughs> they all come onto the stage and each of the athletes and the band members and the drill team, they all had to talk about what was special about what they did. And I sit there with pride in my eyes and I was beaming. So proud of Jose and what he had become. Realizing that he had, it was because of a stupid love letter. It was a stupid love letter that made him into somebody special. 
it made him realize there was so much potential and it made the other kids around him see their potential. Now that's been 10 years ago. I don't know if Jose's a bodyguard now. I don't know if Jose ever became a bodyguard. But I'll tell you what it did do. From fourth grade on, it made him somebody special. No longer did kids look at him as a heavyweight, an overweight kid. They looked at him as a kid that had a, a uniqueness that not other kids had. They applauded him. They applauded him. And I don't know about you, but I feel like in life, most of us go through life, we're, we're booed more than we are applauded. We are. I think that every one of us, I know I speak for, for me, and I think that most of us have more people boo us than applaud us. And they can, you know, maybe I'm speaking figuratively, but more people can find things to criticize you about than they can find things to build you up of, over. And so if this is just one small thing for Mr. Huck, he's actually the weakest and the puniest goat out here. He's the sickliest of all of our goats who are here at Longhorn Lester's. But God forbid today he wears the bell. Today he wears the bell. And he will wear that bell. <laughs> and I'm proud of him. That <laughs> big goofy coat. That goofy coat. I'm so proud of him. And he's going to be the leader of this pack. And you don't, you watch, you watch, you mark my words and you watch and see if he doesn't become something special. If he doesn't take this bell around his neck and he'll end up doing great things with it. And he'll become the leader of this group, this ragtag shit show of an operation. He'll become the leader of these group of this group and they will thrive here. And it may not seem like it now. In fact, this, this is probably the last goat that any one of these guys would have ever thought should become their leader but he wears the bell and I encourage you if you have someone in your life who you can help out give them the bell applaud people let them know how proud you are of them even if the rest of the world may sometimes frown upon them for things that you know different things that they do or don't do character traits that they may or may not possess you build them up and watch what your words can do. Watch what the power of one person can do to change the life of so many. That's our leader right there. That's our Mr. Huck. And I love him.